with How's It? And thank you for joining me for some more mechanical misadventures. This beast in front of me is a Gravely L1 walk behind tractor and a snowblower attachment. Now, what this uh, walk behind tractor thing is, pretty simply, it's the bare minimum amount of stuff you could have to possibly be called a tractor. It's got a 7.6 horsepower motor on the end. It's got this tiny little gearbox, and then it has a PTO. And on the end of that PTO is a snowblower. Now, I, I bought this um, with emotion rather than logic. <laughs> it had snowed four feet, and I was like, screw this. I used that little single stage blower that you saw back there, and I was just pissed off. I was like, no way. I'm getting the gnarliest snowblower that I can get, and I'll never deal with this problem again. So that blower attachment was 200 bucks, and the Gravely tractor was 50. Now, I'm sure you could guess, it's 50 bucks, what? Yeah, it's got problems. Um, it didn't run right, always ran lean. I disassembled, rebuilt the carb and everything, messed with it, still lean. And um, while I was toying with it, I overheated it and it's not quite seized. <clears throat> but it's pretty close. That's with um, no spark plug in it either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna engine swap it or repower it, as the cool tractor guys say, with a Briggs um, 1450 series motor. It's about a 10 horse and much newer. Now, I, I hear you, I hear you. Oh, how, how would you, why would you swap out the motor if it turns over? Well, I'm convinced I can get that Briggs motor in here for a pretty similar price. And um, this motor is cool. I had a lot of fun actually messing with it. It's an interesting little curiosity. And uh, it is an antique, I understand that. But the thing is, I got it to handle four feet of snow. And when there's four feet of snow outside, I'm not taking my chances with a curiosity. Now, um, now here are some of the things I'm talking about. Wow, that's interesting. This is a T-head motor, so it's technically a double underhead cam motor. It's a flathead. It's got this big external oil bath um, air filter, this big external oil filter, this big external magneto, and um, we don't need any of that. We could take all that stuff off and um, actually greatly simplify it by having a newer, just horizontal shaft motor on it. And the newer motor would have more things on it. This thing doesn't have a governor. That's like an external thing. It doesn't have a recoil starter. You just gotta wrap a cord around it and pull it. it takes like one minute between each pull. So, um, that's the uh, path we're going to take. I happen to have access to uh, quite a little pile of these 10 horse Briggs motors. So um, if I could do this for around 100 bucks, hey, we'll be golden. And uh, stick around and maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you'll see me learn something. Maybe I'll just completely <laughs> and abjectly fail. But um, this is going to be a learning experience. The thing I'm going to do is drain this oil. It's uh, an 11 16th. And you can see it right down there. Soupy stuff. All right, we'll let it slowly work its way out and do some other stuff. You have a nut under you, don't you? Yeah. That's okay. We have ways. working on carb stuff. This should already be drained, but you know how that goes. Okay, there's that disconnected. Let's start pulling these accessories off. I love how just too many cooks in the kitchen. And what works? Big pile of washers. A little crusty.
so I got a long socket on that. That is a 19 or three quarters, however you want to look at it. Ta-da! Interesting. We'll put that back on. Now I'm going to pull this magneto off. It's got one bolt underneath it. It is a 7 sixteenths. And it's pretty tough to get to. There we go. I got it right there. And uh, yes, it really will be the slow coming off. But, uh, so uh, it suddenly occurs to me that uh, I probably should have taken that big cherry bomb exhaust that made life so inconvenient, and I would have been able to take that magneto off way easier. Okay, now that that's off, all these accessories are off, let's take these uh, oil lines off. All these oil lines really do is go into a pump right here, and that pump just feeds the motor. And uh, if you change the motor, you don't need that pump. It doesn't actually run anything in this transaxle. So just one more, one more way that we're simplifying things with this swap. All of these fittings, as far as I can tell, are half inch. So a. Uh, 7 sixteenths it looks like holds this on. This oil filter bracket. Now I have seen some of these uh, pictures of the Graveleys and they include a, uh, I don't want to describe it, a dipstick. How would I describe it? Obviously it's a dipstick in them right about here. So if there is a dipstick hole, that would make me very happy. Because um, as far as I could tell right now, the only way to check it is a little like, um, like a little transfer case style fill to fill till it leaks kind of hole, and um, I'd rather not leak if it can be helped. So here's hoping. Let's see. I'm pretty sure that's everything, unless there's something surprising in there. This is another thing that might come in handy. Maybe not even for this. Uh, I mean, maybe it's a dipstick hole. Oh, look at that. Look at that fine American machining. Someone just came in here with a big old... Okay. It's time to start pulling these handlebars off. There is a nut on the back end of this thing. So be sure you get it. I also got this sawhorse, so they don't come crashing down. Oh, there we go. Now it looks like we got this uh, gas tank being held on by 7 sixteenths in the front and a nut in the back for both sides. So that's how that goes. Ta-da! Got the gas can. This is pretty sweet. Uh, I wish I had filmed it because uh, its big spring-loaded clip just went <laughs> and it went flying off. And it's a miracle this uh, glass filter thing didn't crack. But uh, hey, I'm lucky like that. Ta-da! Sweet. I'm going to pop this off the carburetor because I'm almost certain that once it becomes time to take this engine off, it is going to get in the way. And again, this is one of like the few valuable things actually left on the on this motor. Off it 
comes. So I thought I was going to be able to pull that bad boy with the fan shroud on, but it looks like this uh, upper mount right here is going to throw a monkey wrench in that. So off it's got to come. Pretty sure it's just these. Uh, it's just these two right here. How heavy do you think this is? I didn't actually look into it, but um, if I had to take a wild guess about how heavy everything else is, my guess is that it's extremely heavy. I might even try to rig something up to uh, lift it for me, maybe like a ratchet strap or, you know, I do have an engine hoist, something like that. All right, these two are uh, 9 sixteenths, I should mention. Hmm. Leads me towards the uh, got them all side of things. All right, let's haul this stupid thing off. I've been deceived by the schmoo again. This uh, little thing in the back isn't actually a casting mark. It's a nut. It's just so covered in garbage. I couldn't tell. Now that I've just, of course, taken off that lovely handhold, I'm hoping this is maybe like 20, 30 pounds. It's uh, kind of hard to say though, because it's weird. Um, you usually see cast iron block, aluminum cylinder head. This thing's got an aluminum crankcase, a cast iron head, and a cast iron jug. That's a uh, that's a first for me. We got these long through bolts. These are all, um, seems like a half inch. I'm looking at some of these um, bolts on this crankcase and I'm pretty convinced that someone has been in here before me. I mean, half of that is just the sheer age. Yeah, that mounted in there. Half of that is the sheer age of this thing. Like, yeah, am I really gonna be the, believe I'm the only person that's had problems with this thing in like the 60 years it's existed. God, even 70 maybe. <sighs> yup, that overheated. All of my oil turned to water. That's some stinky stuff. Wow. Looks like this bottom mount right here. Also another long bolt that goes all the way through. Well, you're kidding me, no bolt for that one? Nope, I've uh, got one of my other bolts and looks like that could go all the way in so you know nothing's broken off in there. It just was missing a bolt. Okay, so now it looks to me like the only thing keeping it in now is right here. There's this nut right there so let's see if we can. Oh look there it is. There it goes. So I didn't realize it but it looks like this um, output shaft for the magneto is what's interfering. There you go, pull that off. Let's see if we have any more luck heaving, heaving and hoeing. Well, it doesn't matter how simple the project is, it looks like I will never quite get them all. Some line is going to be the last one left. Ooh. There it is. We're out. Now it's just the uh, this input shaft.
Okay. It's pretty heavy, but it's not end your life heavy. Well, there we go. After a not insignificant amount of trouble, there is our gravely tea head right here on the bench. And now we're ready to continue with the repower. Hey, thank you very much for joining me. I hope, uh, hope this was at least a remotely informative. And uh, join me next time. We'll be taking that uh, output gear shaft off so we can use it in our repower. Once again, thank you for watching and have a good one.